Hi, I'm Marianne Esposito with a reflective tribute to my friend Tommy DePaolo, the worldwide beloved children's book author who also called New Hampshire home. Tommy appeared many times with me on Ciao Italia. He was a national treasure, and his books and characters like Draganona and Big Anthony will continue to amuse and delight the child in all of us. Every month, Tommy would send out an email novena prayer in which he asked you to say just one word. The word was peace. May it be forever yours, Tommy. Tommy DePaola had a gift for creating storybooks adored by both children and their parents. In 2014, an exhibit in New London entitled Tommy DePaola Now showcased illustrations from some of his most popular children's books. These gallery walls are covered in art from the pages of children's books which have been bedtime favorites for decades. The stories all dreamed up by Tommy DePaola. In celebration of his 80th birthday, Colby Sawyer College, where he used to teach, opened an exhibit featuring his illustrations and fine art. The show Tommy DePaola Now features his latest masterpiece, a new version of the apple painting that got him noticed at art school. I love this color. It's called Acme Red. And I just love what happens when it hits the canvas. So I was having, I was drooling when I was painting this. <laughs> The art is really incredible, and it's really colorful too. It's gorgeous, it's really great to see it, specifically the one right over there, that's the book of poems that I grew up with, so seeing the original book cover is like pretty magical. The books he's best known for feature Streganona, a character that Tommy doodled in a faculty meeting at Colby Sawyer. His first book in the series won him the Caldecott, the nation's top honor for children's illustration. I'm working on a treasury because it's going to be 40 years next year that she was published. And, um, you know, I just love draw I love drawing her. <laughs> I, I just, you know. I think he I says really she's now year. part of the family. Over the years, his relatives have found their way into his books, like Grandfather Tom, who inspired his circular <laughs> specs, oh, and, and his Italian grandmother, who instilled in him a strong work ethic. You did not get a meatball at my grandmother's dinner table until you had a job. So when I was 14, I had a summer job working in the Connecticut tobacco fields, and I got a meatball. <laughs> He's still hard at work today. What's he doing here? He's whistling. So I'm hoping maybe, maybe, you know, the child will see that and go. <laughs> Tommy released Jack as he turned 80. These small paintings made on scraps of paper in his studio have inspired his next book about a magical robe. Which I don't like to talk about because I'm superstitious. <laughs> And besides that, there's some artist out there that was going to take my idea and get it done before I do. <laughs> He's made a living out of writing and illustrating children's books using his vivid, childlike imagination. And that's my secret. I can remember being a child and the things that were important to me as a young person. I really can go back to what it felt like being a child. Knowing his books have brought children and their parents together for so many years is a source of great pride for this author-illustrator. You know, my mother would read aloud to me every night. <laughs> I'm not anti-device, but a device does not take the place of a warm lap for both people. He 
feels picture books can also be a great art education for young aspiring artists. Between, you know, the book's pages and his some of his oil paintings, and it's great to see all the many different techniques that he uses. Her face was done so quickly and with such economy. And I, you know, it's one of those moments that happens. I did it and I went, oh boy, are you good. <laughs> After 60 years as a professional artist, Tommy's still passionate about his work and not ready to put his career on the shelf. Wow, it went fast. <laughs> yeah, I have a list of things I think, oh, I'm gonna have to be 300 years old of it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start painting with both hands. <laughs> I look forward to receiving a Christmas card from Tommy DePaula. Each year it's a different drawing, usually of a religious theme, always of a religious theme. And it's with all his drawings, they're all terrific. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Once just before Christmas, my sister-in-law, Kate Brummer, and her husband Jeff was staying over with me and Laura here in Ackworth and Kate noticed among my cards greetings from Tommy. You know Tommy DePaula? Yeah, he lives just a couple towns over. You know Tommy DePaula? Kate was really, really impressed. She was a second grade school teacher in the Wellesley, Massachusetts system and she was, I say was, Kate is now retired anyhow. Kate knew firsthand what the books written by Tommy meant to kids. There was no one in the entire literary world, no one who could grab the attention of small children like Tommy. You'd think I was on speaking terms with the Dalai Lama. By the way, Kate is a very good teacher. She's won awards. Last time I remember seeing Tommy was at the courthouse restaurant over in Newport a few years ago. He was there with his friends celebrating his birthday. We chatted briefly. I wished him a happy day. He was as cheerful a person as I have ever met. Photos of him capture that elfin spirit, that happy character. And in the work he did, he was a genius. There's no other word for it. I shall miss him. We shall miss him. The world is a sadder place with his passing. Sleep well, dear friend. Is this one of our favorite books? Yes. In a town in Calabria, a long time ago, there lived an old lady everyone called Stavega Nona. he said, and presto, the holiday season was over for another year. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah. 